Nope. Just need more than two hands to hold a cup of coffee and click the next sector button. All right. Uh, another drow uh, appears over the northern escarpment, and he is going to follow this around. Oops. In fact, he's... I think it's... Uh, nope, I did. I had it right the first time. I had the proper amount of movement. Uh, he's going to go here. Then he's going to go ahead and uh, use... He's going to... He disappeared. Yeah, he did. Did he disappear? Yeah. It looks like he moved off the map. Oh, yeah, he's, he's, he's right here. There he somewhere. is. Yeah, he's gonna take his. Uh, he's just gonna go ahead and take his longbow, and he's gonna fire at. He's gonna fire at Edith. I mean, Edith is is right there. I mean, it's pick on Edith day, isn't it? Ah, Edith, that's a hit. Edith, you take uh, eight more damage. You are. Uh, I think you're. You've got quite a bit of damage on you, don't you, Edith? Uh, yeah, yeah, you're at 11. 11. Yeah, you're at 11 to 31, so you're you're, uh, you're in pretty good shape still. All right, so let's go next to Kara. Yeah, a lot of things is happening, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I thought, Wes. Uh, R2D2 ish. She's going to take her rapier and dagger and try to slash. Sorry. Okay. Let's see your rapier hit. Uh, it is a hit. Go ahead and roll damage, and you can uh, you can also go ahead and uh, forgot to put your your sneak attack on your on your. Uh, okay, well you missed on your offhand. So for your main hand attack, go ahead and drop your sneak attack damage on there. There you go. And now you can go ahead and and drop your damage on Sarith. All right, Sarah takes nine damage, uh, piercing damage, and, and uh, piercing damage from the sneak attack. He is in very bad shape uh, right off of the bat. She is also going to say to him in Undercommon, uh, his traitor, and you don't kill your own servants. It was just a, a stupid mushroom anyway. That's okay if, if I fall in combat... At least I know that I'll still die, be in my grave, and I know that I'll still be innocent. But it does hurt to, doesn't hurt to work a deal with the drow to try to prove my innocence, does it? I hope you all are not offended by that. Uh, well, it does hurt you. Bleeding, aren't you? Oh, he's in bad shape. And I think she's going to use her bonus action to disengage. Move. Cutting action, okay. Yeah, exactly. Um, so oh, you're... You... Already used your your bonus action to get your offhand attack, so... Because you're, you're, you're... Once you attack, you use your bonus action to attack again if you attacked. You know, you have to use the attack action. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. That's okay. She can stand there. Yeah. So you're yeah. So you're cutting action. You can't can't get another uh, bonus action, unfortunately. Sorry about that. I almost let that happen. I was uh, had a little uh, brain lapse there for a second. All right. So let's see. We have a uh, let's see. Trowel. Drow Scout number five this is the one that's back here. He's going to take his bow, uh, aim down at Turvey, seeing that Turvey's trying to climb up the escarpment, and this Drow is going to attack Turvey. And the attack versus Turvey is a, uh, a crit and miss. Very nice. Nice. <laughs> so, as the, as the Drow, as he fumbles around up there, he actually slides and slides down the escarpment. Uh, I'm going to do an acrobatics... Uh, actually, I'm going to do a dexterity saving throw for him. And if he, if he misses the... I'm going to say it's a, a DC 12 dex saving throw. 
uh, which uh, he does fail. Uh, he'll go ahead and take 1d6 bludgeoning damage from the fall. So I'm going to give uh, Drow number 5 2 bludgeoning damage from the fall. As he, you know, basically slides down, loses his footing, uh, and because of the crit fumble, and uh, takes two bludgeoning damage from the fall. So we will go ahead and go to uh, Eldith is next. Um, Eldith is uh, not too happy about this. So Eldith is going to uh, engage this drow, basically cursing at the drow. You know how the dwarves and the drow, they, they don't get along. So Eldith is going to attack with her warhammer twice. <laughs> so, so Eldith basically fumbles the rest of her turn because she she's just so enamored and laughing that this drow just fell, you know, and 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 got hurt falling. Uh, that that she is just so taken back by this as she goes into maneuver and attack. She herself is so distracted by this that she trips over a uh, sort of like a small uh, stump that's on the ground and she trips and you know she gets back of course but her her attack was such a horrible miss all right let's <laughs> unbelievable uh, now let's go ahead and have a uh, another drow he's going to come from around the corner so you guys are oh man you guys are in pretty bad shape Edith this drow comes up he is also wielding a uh, a short sword he is going to attack you thank goodness there's no uh, gangbang bonus right <laughs> as we would say if we were playing savage worlds no doubt. <laughs> so Edith you are being attacked uh, you are hit by the short I sword no right I know you take a total of uh, five more so you are you are actually uh, taking a little bit of damage now we will go on to uh, Let's see, a, another uh, a drow, which is drow scout number four. Uh, drow scout number four, this is such a huge congestion of bodies. Too bad Misty wasn't here. She would throw a fireball in the middle of all this. You know she would. Uh, so, dr <laughs> <laughs> you know she would, Lynx. Drow scout number four, uh, he is up on the escarpment. Uh, he is going to uh, take his bow, aim down at Morveen, and try to assist Jimjar. So the attack on Morvine uh, is a hit, and you take minimum damage of three. Let's go to uh, Bupido, which Bupido uh, has a hooked short spear and a light repeating crossbow. So uh, Bupido, which is here, uh, has his short spear out and is basically going to attack this drow that slid down this present that fell off of the escarpment right in front of him. So we'll see if Bubito uh, can hit this guy. And he does with an 18. Uh, he doesn't... <laughs> He doesn't do too much damage to him. He's he's a he's a pretty uh, he's he's a little dare as a weakling. <laughs> and now Topsy, Topsy's also going to attack this this drow that slid down right at the uh, as a gift to his feet. So he's going to attack him twice. The first attack is a miss, and the second attack is also a miss. This drow gets up actually quite dexterous to draw are and he you know basically uh, avoids both of the attacks as he pivots from left to right all right so topsy is done brother echo you're up man we are almost done with round one everybody almost done <laughs> brother echo as brother echo seen uh, Zara, uh kill Thor, he just gets furious and i'm going to use an automatic crit Hit him with my short sword. Yep. Go ahead and roll your uh, roll your uh, attack there, brother Echo. And if you hit, you can cash in that crit. Your uh, attack is a hit. So go ahead and roll. Let's see. Add on. Go ahead and roll damage, and then add another uh, d6 on there for your uh, short sword. So go ahead and roll your damage first. Okay. So yeah, and go ahead and add your d6 on there too. 
because as you as you plunge your sword into Seraph, you know he just basically kind of as you plunge it right into the center of his chest, he grabs onto the blade and he's like looking at you and and blood spills out of his mouth and then he falls down on his knees and when he falls down onto his knees he slides right off of your blade and your blade is dripping with the blood of the drow Sarath is incapacitated and then after he slides off my angle does it to side and I just wail back and punch Jim Joy right in the back of the head All right, and that will be your offhand attack. So I will go ahead and put a uh, a blood splatter here. Now remember, blood splatters on the ground. Uh, that means that uh, that is going to be pretty much difficult to rain. Oh, I just almost deleted all tokens. That would have been such a nightmare, wouldn't it have? All right, so your uh, offhand unarmored uh, unarmed attack. Hits Jim Jar. You can go ahead and roll damage. <laughs> Jim Jar. Yeah, you, you basically is. Uh, I, I don't know. Do you say anything to Jim Jar? To do you say anything to him or? No, I just like I just scream in my little halfling scream, and when I punch him, I catch him right in the side of the head where his temple is, and it just makes blood just squirt. Out it of does. His and it goes blood just goes over Morven and like like it just like blood just squirts right into Morven's face. That does because Gross, it, dude. yeah as you hit him in the side of the head. I hope when Jim Jar falls down you just spit on him. The whole side of his head basically explodes from the, the power of your from your attack. Jim Jar goes down. Now you have these these drow that uh, you still have to contend with. Nice, uh, nice job. You've uh, taken out uh, Sarath and, and, and Jim Jar. And uh, Stool is down as well. Okay, so that uh, looks like that's going to be it for Echo. So now we're up to the last of, of round one, which is uh, the, the Scout, which is here. Uh, he's going to kind of move around the, the escarpment and move to the back. And he's going to attack... He's probably going to go ahead and attack, I would say, he's going to attack Shushar. He's going to take out the Kuatoa. He's going to try to take out the Kuatoa. And, uh, yeah, as he, as he shoots his bow, he misses and an arrow lands at the, the feet of, of, uh, of the Kuatoa. And you can see that he's really kind of cowering back there, Kara. All right, so uh, up to round two now. Whew, that was a heck of a, a round one. That was uh, pretty insane. All right, so the uh, the drow in front of you, Edith, uh, is going to attack you again. In fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna move over one, and uh, I think he's going to attack Al because he's trying to make room for his his other comrade. But his other comrade's holding the hey yeah. Anyway, we'll say he's attacking Al. We'll say it's pick on pick on Al this round. Uh, and he misses, so nice, uh, nice evade, Al, as you kind of sidestep his attack. All right, so next is Drow number three, which is the one that has the the crossbow. He's going to step back actually, and use his hand crossbow to attack Edith. He's got a nice clean line of a uh, line of sight shot. <clears throat> and misses misses Edith. The arrow just comes and lands, you know, the the bolt from the the hand crossbow will just lands into your shield. All right, so we're going to draw number 4. Which draw number four is to your left, Edith? Uh, draw number four is going to go ahead and just attack you with a short sword. Oh my goodness! That is a crit hit. Now you guys still have two natural ones. You can change that to a natural one if you want, but uh, 
You, you can do that. And who got rid of one of their crits? Was it Eco got rid of one of her, one yeah, of their crits? I, I, use, I use one of the crits. Okay. You guys can use one of those if you want. If not, uh, I thought we use it. I thought we use it too. Okay. All right. You guys will go ahead and take that uh, crit off of. So that'll that'll nullify that to make it a one. Thank you to the special in-game perks from today's extra life event. Let's check out the the goal. Haven't checked it for a, a couple minutes. Still at seven hundred dollars. Seven hundred of a thousand dollars, and we're only almost two hours in. That is a uh, that is amazing. So uh, thank you, uh, thank you guys for uh, you know donating to to all of that. Uh, potent, they are at an elevated level, so it's not disadvantage. They are about 10 to 15 feet above the party, so they're not uh, they're not taking disadvantage because they're on the escar the escarpment, 10 to 15 foot up. You know, when you're playing on a, a map like this, it's hard to justify the levels. All right, so let's see. That is nullified. You'll take no damage. That'll be a one. Let's see. Let's go to you, party. I, I didn't want to use that on myself. I figure that that should be a, a party. Mani thing. maniac. Thank you for the follow, Mani maniac. Appreciate it. All right, so Shushar is going to move up, and he's not going to take an attack of opportunity because remember, the drow are 15 feet up. So uh, Sh uh, Shushar is going to run and kind of uh, he's going to run over here to stool and try to check to see if stool is uh, still cautious and he's going to try to perform some type of uh, uh, medical assistance let me do a uh, a wisdom I believe uh, is uh, is medicine wisdom it is he doesn't have a, a kit, so he would have to have what a. Is it a DC 10? I try to remember all this stuff. Let's see. Medicine. Whoops. Checks let you try to stable. I, I believe it's a DC 10. So uh, let's let's do a a wisdom check with Shushar, uh, Shushar to see if he can uh, stabilize, which he uh, he does stabilize stool. So uh, stool does not have to make any kind of death saving throws, but I, I think it was uh, you know as he as he performs the mouth to mouth resuscitation on the on the Mykonid, uh, he does uh, pretty much mouth? stabilize that's him. That's not his mouth. <laughs> oh my God, that's <laughs> not his mouth. <laughs> Well, don't forget, Shushar also gurgles water, so maybe he's just, you know, like, watering the plants. Oh, that is too good. All right, so let's go to Turvy, watering the plants. Turvy's going to move over here. She's going to move up here because she's trying to get a running, she's going to try to get another running jump, uh, well, not a jump, but she's going to try to run up the, the embankment. So she's she's doing a, a dash, basically, to try to get up. So I need to do another strength check with Turvy. And if she gets up, uh, which she does not, she slides back to poor Turvy. You know, the... the <laughs> <laughs> the, the poor Smirf Nebelin, you know, gets up to the top of the escarpment, slides back down, and you can hear basically cussing drats and rockin' 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 rockin', you know, speaking in undercommon. Kara, she's pissed she's now tried to climb up this escarpment twice and failed. All right, so that is uh, it for Turvy. Let's go to uh, a drow again. This is a drow scout 2. Let's go ahead and... Uh, fire down on brother echo uh you know the the drow is up you know 15 feet 10 15 feet so the it's not firing at disadvantage or or any type of uh you know penalty like that so we're going to uh, fire down at you echo and hit with a 16 and brother echo ooh you're going to take max damage at 10 i actually used deflect missile Okay, so you're going to spend, uh, what is it, a one key point or something like that in a reaction? No, it's just my reaction. It's not a key point. It's <clears> just my reaction. Okay, all right. 
Mm, so it's uh, 1d10 plus my dexterity modifier plus your mon my monk level. Okay. Let me uh, put down that uh, you've used your reaction, so you won't be able to use another one. Now, if I if I reduce the damage to zero, I could turn around, and spin a key point to throw it back. I could throw, I turn around and throw that missile back at him. Yeah. I thought that cost a key. I guess I was, uh, I guess I was reading that uh, wrong. It costs a key to throw it back, but if I just ah, uh, that's it, it where it is. Cost well, let's see if you re let's see if you reflect uh, more than ten, because he did ten piercing damage to you. Yeah, so I get uh, plus three. And plus three, so I'm gonna put a plus six in the modifier. Cause three for dexterity, three for monk level. Okay. Wow. So there's a chance he could. Shimo, thanks so much for the host, man. Come on, Dildo Dragons. Which I rolled a thirteen. Uh, yeah, you uh, absorb the damage, and if you want to spend the key point, you can throw that uh, throw that back at him if you wish. If you wish. To. I am going to spend a key point, and I'm going to uh, throw it back at him. Okay. You just want me to roll my uh, dart. The attack. It'll be a an attack, right? Yeah, it's an attack. Uh, I g it's a I get all my proficiencies as it as it counts as a monk weapon. So you just want me to roll my dart. Well, you're throwing the the arrow back at him. You know what I mean. You're throwing the arrow for back. The you, you, yeah, for the attack part, you caught the arrow and you're throwing the arrow back at him. Because you because you spent you're spending a key point, so you throw the arrow back at him. Yeah, but I'm talking about just the wall purpose, just to roll my dot, uh, my dot action, so it does all the modifiers. Oh, th that's 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 uh that's fine. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, if it's it's the same thing anyway, so yeah, that'll be fine. Oh, actually, uh, the drow, you missed the drow. He just kind of, he, he looks rather impressed, but when you throw it back, it it, it flies way off, and he just kind of smirks at you and pff, does one of these. All right, so let's uh, let's go next. We're going to Al. So Al, it's your turn. Big Al in the Library of Congress. Daniel Marina, thank you very much. Republic of Cascadia. Uh, Maniac, thank you. Oh, I, I like it. Yeah. So uh, on your on that character sheet, Al, you'll you're gonna notice uh, on the 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 actions, the very bottom tab. See where it says uh, uh, it says spells and it says hunter's mark. Yeah, you need to take that little hunter's mark icon and drag it on mm -hmm. top of your token because that's gonna uh, put the extra one d six damage if you hit on that target. All right, and don't okay, forget so you get Colossus Slayer too, which Colossus Slayer is gonna be extra damage, but you won't add Colossus Slayer uh, until you hit. And Colossus Slayer is because he's a hunter. Colossus Slayer is if the target is max damage, you don't do Colossal Slayer damage. But if the you know if he's one hit point down from max, then you are able to take that Colossus Slayer damage. So, all right. So that's how that works. And plus, I'll, I'll help you out okay, with that cool. as well. So, all right. So you'll just okay, take that uh, Hunter's Mark, drop it on on you, and uh, you're Hunter's marking which target number? Uh, you just hit Control. And target one. the drow. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I dropped it on number one. Okay. I'm, I'm also going to move. Okay, here. if you're going to move there, I'm going to take the attack of opportunity on you from scout number four. So he's going to give you an attack of was opportunity. He, I thought he was. I, yeah, I, I thought he was. Oh, no, yeah, that's right. He is on the escarpment. My bad. So I'm going to accept that move. He doesn't get that. That's right, because five fell down. My bad. So yeah, you get the move there. Uh, cool. Draw one is now marked with a hunter's mark. So go ahead and drop hunter's mark on your uh, on yourself in the combat tracker. Also, I'm on myself. Okay. Okay, and then you can go ahead and attack. <clears throat> okay, I see. Uh, Ready. This will go to one.
Did I do that right? <laughs> I hope so. Um, what did you drop on on yourself? Hold on. I dropped him. Okay, yeah, on, you did. You did put on what I thought. There. Like, yep, yep, you did. Uh, so now all you're going to want to do is attack the target. You want to just do your attack now on draw one. Yeah. So um, what I I didn't do last time is is put the attack on number one. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, you just drop it right on down. And there yeah, you're you're uh, it's, it's a Got miss. It. So now draw right. number one is a is a miss. Your offhand oh. is a thirteen, which is also a miss. So both of your attacks, both main and offhand, uh, are both misses. Zoiks. Well, we got some space there for you now. Uh, Morvine. All right, let's go to Morvine. Morvine the Bard. What say you, Morvine? So the uh, so Drow two that is to the right of Al is he up on an escarpment too, or is he? No, he is on the ground. He's on the ground. Yes. Okay. I had the two uh, mixed up. The scouts are up in the air, except for number five. He's on the ground. Okay. The drow are on the ground. So my targeting for Thunder Wave, so a 15-foot cube, is that like the three that are in front of me? And then, I mean, how, I'm just trying to think of that 15, is 15 feet on each side then? For what are you wanting to do? Like a Thunder Wave. A Thunder a Wave is cube. burning a hole in your pocket, isn't it? Well, I'm, j I'm just curious because obviously I was thinking of it wrong. So if a 15-foot cube... Yeah, yeah, that's you pretty much hit everyone but uh, Turvy. Yeah, it, it right. uh, it's basically three by three. It's a three by square, three by three square, at your north, south, east, or west point, and it would okay. be a, a three by three square. So basically, so centered uh, on me, and then fifteen feet around. Yeah, me. let me uh, let me make okay. a uh, like let me make this real quick. There we go. Oops. I see. Okay. Thanks. So it yeah it would it would basically be like this, and then you would uh it would be there or there or oops or here or to the north of you. But it would it would stop because of the you know the the corner that's jutting out in front of you. Although it would hit right, number right. two. So I mean, if, okay. if 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 you wanted to do that, I mean, you could do it in front of you, and I would you know I would allow it to seeing that it is 15 foot. You know, the the force of thunder wave would literally shoot up the ins the escarpment and hit you know drow number four on the escarpment. And you wouldn't affect any of your party members if you were going to do that from here, where, where you're at now. Right. It's up to you. I th totally up I to think, you. Uh, I think I am going to do that. I mean, I wasn't going to, but now, since you said I could do that, I think I'm going to do that. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, so I'm going to, you know, wiggle my fingers and, and uh, kind of enhance my voice. And that would be the thunder wave as I kind of do a dragon shout at them. Okay, all right. So go ahead and target both of them. Hit control and, you know, target them too. And then do the saving throws, because I think it's, what, a constitution saving throw or something like that? Yeah. Constitution or dex or something like that. And we'll see if they uh, are successful or... Uh, we'll see. Drought number two is successful, and the scout that's on the escarpment uh, is unsuccessful, so he basically fails... Uh, let's go ahead and roll damage, and it'll it'll calculate the correct damage. All right, so uh, both of the drow took damage. Now, as for uh, Scout Number Four, I'm gonna I'm gonna make basically make him slide down the escarpment from the from the force damage, because it's what a is it a five or ten foot shift pushback? Ten. Is it a ten? Yeah, he's not even gonna get a saving throw. He's basically pushed all the way over the you know the ledge. He's pushed all the way over. So you hear a and I'm gonna give him a little bit of a bludgeoning damage from the fall as well. So he's gonna wow. He's actually scout number four is gonna take four damage now to six damage, which is max max bludgeoning damage from the basically from the fall down below. I'm not gonna give him a saving throw because I, I don't okay. I don't think thunder you know he already had one saving throw, so I'm not gonna warrant him having another one. He's just gonna flat out take the the damage. So, all right. 
So let's go ahead and go to. Uh, yeah, then I'll use oh, uh, my.